Hi everyone, today we will talk about SQLite, which is a library used for quick and simple databases. Why quick? Because we don't need to set up a special server. It is a serverless database. Why simple? Because we use regular SQL commands, which pretty much look like clear English instructions. Now, if you're not familiar with SQL, don't worry about it. I will cover it in this tutorial. So are you ready? Let's do this. And we will begin with some starter code, which as usual you can find in the description. Now, all it is, is a very simple Python list with all the GTA releases ever. More particularly, each release is stored in a tuple where the first value is the release year, the second value is the release name, and the last value is the fictional city or state in which the story happens. And as you may have guessed, this is the data we would like to store in our upcoming database. So let's create it. So at the very top of our code, we will first import SQLite3. And we will then create an empty database with SQLite3.connect. And inside the round brackets, we will select a name for our database. In my case, I would like to call it GTA. And we will, of course, add the .db extension to it to indicate that this is a database. We can then assign this expression to a variable called connection. And since we have established a connection, we will also need to terminate it in the end of our code. So let's scroll to the bottom and we will type connection.close. That's it. Now, if you're using an IDE like Wayscript X, you can just simply press on this play button at the top and your code will just automatically run. However, if you're using a terminal, I can show you how to do it as well. So let me first leave to the root folder. And then from the root, we will first navigate to our project folder. We can do this by typing CD, change directory. And in my case, that would be main env slash SQLite. And then once we are in the correct folder, we can run our file by typing Python or Python 3. And then the name of the file, which I have saved under main.py. Let's go ahead and press enter. And once we do that, you can see a brand new file was created in our directory called gta.db. We will open it and it is absolutely empty. There is nothing inside it. So let's go ahead and fill it with data. Now, in order to use SQL commands, we need to create something called a cursor object. We can do this by typing connection.cursor and we will assign this expression to cursor. And now this object is now in charge of all our communication with the database. So whenever we execute some kind of a command, we execute it on the cursor object. So for example, if we would like to create a brand new table inside our database, we will type the following cursor.execute. And then inside the round brackets, we can begin passing our SQL commands. We do this within a string where we would like to create a table called GTA, where the first column would be the release year. The second column would be the release name. And the last column would be the city, the fictional city in which the story happens. So let's close these round brackets. And there you go. That's SQL. Now, traditionally, we also specify the type of data expected by each column. Now, our first column, the release year, is expecting an integer. And that's because the first item of each of our tuples is an integer. Now, since the second item is string, our next column, the release name, is expecting a string. Now, a Python string is called text in SQL. And we will do the same for our city column. It is also expecting a string. Cool. Now, let's fill this table with data. And we will have to do this after we define our release list list because it needs to exist before we can use it. And since we are planning to insert multiple rows of data at once, we will type cursor.execute many instead of just execute. In terms of SQL, we will insert into the GTA table the following values. Now, the structure of our values would be a tuple with three different items represented by the question mark. So the first question mark is a placeholder for the year. 
the second question mark is a placeholder for the name, and the last question mark is a placeholder for the fictional city. So this is pretty much our template. But that's not all. On top of the template, we will also need to specify the actual data we would like to insert into this template. Now, in our case, we call this list a release list, which we will copy, and we will paste the name of our list as a second argument. Cool. Now, let's go ahead and save this file. Let's get rid of this empty database we have created earlier because we're creating it again inside our code. So it doesn't need to be here. Cool. And now we can go ahead and rerun our script. So let's press on this play button. And we have now generated a different database file. Let's open it. And this time it is not empty. It has all kinds of content in it. But the problem is this is not meant to be read by humans. So we need to find a way of translating this into human language. Otherwise, we will never know if everything was correct in our um, insertion commands. So back in our Python file, we can print all the rows of our database with the following commands. For row in cursor.execute. And this time, we would like to select all the values from GTA, our GTA table. And once we have selected them, we would also like to print each of our rows one at a time. We can then save this file. We can, of course, get rid of our previous database file, which is deleted once again. And let's rerun this code. Cool. And we see that our select command is returning the exact same values we have passed inside our release list. Awesome. OK, but what if we don't want to select all the values of our database? What if we want to search for a particular row where a particular value is stored? Let's say we only want to select the releases that happen inside Liberty City. To do this, we will type cursor.execute once again. We will also type select all from GTA once again, but this time we will include a condition where the column of city will be represented by the dictionary key of C, followed by the dictionary itself, where the key of C corresponds to the value of Liberty City. So with this command, we are basically focusing on the city column, our last column. And whenever we find an instance of Liberty City, we return the entire row, or actually select the entire row. But that's not all. In order to properly do this, we will also need to add a cursor.fetch all command. And we can assign this to, let's call this variable GTA search. We can then, of course, print it. So print GTA search. And let's check if everything worked. Um, let's just separate the previous print commands with a separator. Cool. This time it looks good. We will save this file. And once we rerun this code, we have selected two different GTA releases matching our search criteria, as in happening in Liberty City. Now, lastly, it is very rare to see a database containing only a single table. So let's see how we can combine multiple tables together and how we can manipulate their data with the help of Python. So in addition to our GTA table, we will create a cities table where we will compare between the fictional city where the story happens and the actual real life city on which it was inspired. So Liberty City is New York, Vice City is Miami, Los Santos is Los Angeles and so on. So let's go ahead and copy our first create command and we will of course adjust it to our new table. So instead of calling it GTA, we will call it cities. And instead of the previous columns we have specified, we will pass the first column to be GTA city in the form of text. And the second column would be the real city also in the form of text. Now, just for the sake of the demonstration, I will only populate a single row inside this new table. On your end, you can do everything by the book and use the execute many command and just like I've showed you earlier. Now, in my case, I'm going to cut some corners. So I will do cursor dot execute. I will insert into cities values 
in the form of a tuple with two items. And then the data itself would be this tuple where the first value is Liberty City and the second item is New York. Cool. Oh, my head is blocking it a bit, but I'm sure you understood what I've done. Now, since we have inserted these values, we now need to select them. And since our select command will look almost exactly like the one from above, we'll just copy it. We will paste it. And then instead of selecting all from GTA, we will select it from cities. And then instead of selecting the city column, we will select the GTA city column. Yeah, and everything else looks about right. Uh, we will also add the cursor, fetch all command, and we will assign it to cities search. Cool. And let's also print it. Of course. Cool. Let's save it and let's rerun our code. And now we are also selecting values from our new cities table. Awesome. Good job. Now let's go ahead and combine between both our tables. So let's try to replace every instance of Liberty City inside GTA search with New York City. So let's scroll down and I already prepared a print um, separator statement over here and let's type the following. So for I in GTA search, which contains two different items and for each of these items, we will replace some of their values with a list comprehension where we would like to get New York only if the value happens to be equal to Liberty City. Otherwise, I would like to leave whichever value it is as is. So I will type value for value in I, which is our iteration variable from above. But that's not all. Let's replace New York and Liberty City with the actual values we have fetched from the database. So let's open our terminal and we see that Liberty City is stored on row zero on column zero and New York is stored on row zero and on column one. So let's do the exact same thing inside our code. So cities search in the row of zero in the column of one and same goes for Liberty City. Well, almost same goes for Liberty City. It is cities search in the row of zero in the column of zero. And then lastly, we will assign this expression to adjusted and we will of course print it below just to make sure we got everything right. Perfect. So we have successfully manipulated our GTA search data and we have replaced every instance of Liberty City with the city of New York. Congratulations. Awesome. So in this tutorial, we have learned the basics of SQLite. In the next few tutorials, I will show you how to web scrape data from the internet and how to store it inside our database automatically. I will also show you how to connect your database to a Flask application. Now, if you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a like, maybe leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell or share this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.